Lou says, I have the privilege of introducing her and in particular of introducing Land of Joy. And some of you have been and some of you might not have been, but hopefully you can um, see uh, Land of Joy here. Um, it's a short tour of the, um, the Gompa, the meditation room. And Land of Joy has been offering retreats um, for nearly six years now. And it has, um, I think this is particularly relevant because we have the beautiful Chin Rezig there in the meditation room here at Land of Joy. And Land of Joy is basically a retreat center and it is under the auspices of the FPMT, the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition. It's one of 161 uh, centers and uh, retreat centers, projects, etc. And it has um, the, the really distinct thing about Land of Joy, it's based on a generosity model. So everybody involved with it offers their time voluntarily. Uh, nobody's paid in any way. So all of the volunteers who run the centre do so voluntarily. And teachers like Lou do so voluntarily. And the um, sort of lineage holders of, of um, Land of Joy, you can see there, are His Holiness Dalai Lama and um, the two original founders, Lama Yeshi and Lama Zopa. And I could say much, much more about Land of Joy, but I now would like to just introduce Lou, who is uh, one of the most special uh, women that you could hope to know. Her generosity and kindness and um, heart and knowledge and wisdom, dedication and commitment are just phenomenal and I have the privilege now to introduce you to Lou. So over to Lou. Thank you. Thank you Wendy, that was very moving and uh, it was really moving to see Land of Joy where I have, uh, yeah, I've spent some time in the kitchens and uh, in the garden and all sorts of things and, and on many retreats as well. So I'm really glad you got a glimpse of that because uh, um, I just wanted to start by saying thanks to Land of Joy for all the hard work that's done there, for all the teams that have been setting up all these wonderful retreats, even under these COVID uh, uh, difficult situations at this time, and also for our hosts who've stepped forward and have to become quite technically trained to uh, make sure it all happens online. And, and it's, been, uh, it's been working really great. And we even when uh, Land of Joy opens again, hopefully soon. Um, we will continue with this because it means we can reach out to quite a lot of people and hopefully, you know, give them a taste of the Dharma. And uh, thank you very much, you guys, you people, for coming this morning. I think you're really brave and you got up really early. I mean, for me, it's an hour later in Spain where I am. And uh, um, for giving you time because that's part of the generosity model. We always say this, you know, I mean, just giving your time is really special and it's the starting point because you could have done anything today. I mean, maybe it would have been, I don't know, you're all let out at the moment. You could have done anything, but here you are. So just, you know, give yourself a pat on the on the back for that. You know, that's a, yeah, that's a good start. It's a really good start. Um, I'd like uh, for you to introduce yourselves, but rather than do all, and there's five of us at the moment. Hopefully there'll be a couple more joiners, but if it, do, it doesn't matter if they don't, because I think a nice intimate practice, we're going to really um, be able to work together. So I wondered if maybe Elizabeth and Olia would introduce themselves. Just a short introduction, please, just to say where you are and really where you are in your Buddhist practice. Um, uh, just so we can get to know each other a little bit. If you can just keep it to two or three minutes each, we'd appreciate that. Um, but, you know, just go for it. Olia, do you want to make a start for us, please? Happy to. Thank you very much, Lou. I'm happy to see you. Happy to see Wendy and everyone. It's just a glorious morning. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good uh, way to start, you know, such a practice. I always wanted to because I've been... Um, uh, I've, I've, I've been, I've got first introduced to the meditation in Dharamsala, so, um, and that's uh, in 2018, uh, in 2011, sorry, but um, 
it's been uh it's been a i think it's been a journey because um because you need to find what the, the type of mold and people around that are right for you and you need to sort of connect but i think i've been very fortunate in in being guided by you know people who are actually been very connected to land of joy as well including Probina and Paula and and when I found Lander Joy in in that sense I I realized that this is you know one of the places where I I'm really benefiting especially through um, through the pandemic so um, yeah so I've been uh, practicing um, uh, since 2011 but I'd like to deepen my practice and particularly in understanding of tantra because um, although I don't know I think much about it I've felt that uh, the the type of experiences that I have are, are actually close to, um, to to the tantric practices and also um, the, the the things that I do intuitively are, are somehow connected when someone tells me oh this is a tantric practice and I think oh I didn't know so that's why I yeah I, I'd like to to get more uh, more knowledge um, and to understand, I guess, what how my experiences make sense um, through this practice as well. Thank you, everyone, and very happy to be here. Lovely, Olya. Olya, that's uh, that's a really nice introduction. Gives us a good idea. Can I ask where you are at the moment, Olya? Are you? In I'm. I'm in Birmingham. I'm okay. still in Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we've met, haven't we, at Land of Joy? Yes, we have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome to the course. Um, so yeah, that's really what the course is about, for people to get to know a little bit more about Tantra. So you come hopefully to the right place and we will discover together. Elizabeth, can you tell us <laughs> where uh, you are? <laughs> I try to do that without melting because I usually cry <laughs> when I'm presenting myself. Uh, for some reason, it triggers something that it makes me let me down. So I apologize for that in advance. Um, well, I'm just looking forward to have another teaching from yourself. I was uh, very disappointed to not be there last week. And, uh, I'm excited uh, of the... Um, uh, well, in... <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You know me since the first time I came to Land of Joy for the Medicine Buddha retreat and then uh, came back for Robina's teachings and uh, the Waita retreat. So there are two obviously uh, tantric um, um, practices and as I mentioned to you lately uh, I'm reading this book which is in French but uh, you yeah. can you can probably see what the, the deity at the front. So it's called uh, "Become the Buddha, or the Compassion Buddha." So I think I, I hopefully I'm, I am on the right course. <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, for everything you you're going to share with us today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking forward to that. And uh, hello to Spain and Birmingham and uh, and uh, to Gabriel. Craig, which I don't know, <laughs> and uh, and obviously uh, hello again to Wendy, which I I look forward to see you for the unlocking your potential group. Great, yes, yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so I am in Chester. It's written down <laughs> from a previous retreat in UK. So at the Welsh border. Thank you very much. Okay, well that introduces us to a couple of people and because of time and I want to do some morning practice at a time when it's really, I find the best time for doing some body work. Uh, we're going to do the pranayama as I said in a minute, but I, I just need enough time to introduce you to the course. And then in the next session, um, Gabriel and Craig, you can also introduce yourselves by which time we'll all be working together and. Uh, um, the whole idea behind this course, I mean, Paula Chichester used to um, actually do this course at Land of Joy, and I used to just help on the morning sessions doing pranayama, and, you know, it was her style of, of teaching that really inspired me. Um, it's not so technical, 
but having said that she really knows she really knows the dharma inside out because she's such a practitioner um, but she works very much with the body as well and 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 that's what i want to introduce to us so it's a sort of twofold thing it's to try and demystify tantra a little bit you know because when i started tantra practices i didn't even know it was tantra practice i was told go to this temple and um, you know, um, take this initiation because it's really, really an important one. And I just went, oh, okay. And then, you know, over the years in dribs and drabs, I started to learn about Tantra. And I just think that, oh, I wish I'd known a little bit more at the beginning. You know what I mean? Um, because it is so amazing. It's such an amazing system. And um, so that's basically the aim of this weekend is that through this sadhana, we're going to look at the Tantra practice, what it is, what it is not, why we're going to do it, you know, so we can inspire ourselves to practice um, and, you know, just find out about it. Because unless we know about it, you know, we have no reasons to practice it. And, you know, just these beautiful images or because your friend got an, initi an initiation, um, those really aren't going to keep you going. They're not going to sustain you those those sort of ideas um so really this is to give you a little bit of punch a little bit of energy and wow you know this really is something mm, you know maybe i should do a little bit more of this you know um so uh we'll look at the basics we'll look at the practice and the structure we'll also discuss together um uh, you know i'd like i don't want to do all the talking you know, we can learn from each other here because you've all had a little bit of experience. And, um, you know, I think it's important we discuss, you know, a lot of the things that come up when you're doing Tantra practice and uh, ask questions. And if there's any questions I can't ask, answer, uh, then I'll get back to you. I will find out for you, you know. Um, so we'll work together on this because just preparing the course has been amazing. It's, it's really, give me such an experience. So thank you for that. Um, and by practicing the sadhana together, which the long sadhana, um, sometimes they seem a bit daunting, um, but you know, His Holiness the Dalai Lama did um, compose this. I mean, he didn't really want to, you know, you can imagine, because it's about himself being the deity, um, but he knew that it was going to be beneficial. And that's a sort of compassionate being. Uh, that his holiness is and so we use this with in Paula's uh, intro retreats and I just thought it was so inspiring because the Chen Rays is a lovely beautiful beautiful image you know I'm looking at it here you know on, on, on the Sadhana it's just so beautiful and all the lovely tankers and you know there's lots of reasons to be attracted to it uh, to, to the image um, but you know we need a bit more than that to really inspire us and to connect with Chen Rezi. And what this beautiful um, sadhana does is it's sort of got two aspects. It, it connects us completely uh, with Chen Rezi through a living master. Now, we're not likely to meet Chen Rezi in this lifetime. We may realize uh, him quite, quite uh, a lot in our visualizations, but we we've, we've just got too many things in our heads sort of what we call obscurations and delusions um that we can't see clearly just like we can't see the buddhas clearly so um this sadhana sort of connects us with the living master so that through you know you know this wonderful compassionate being that we know that is present on this earth you know and we see the activities um we can then connect through to the essence of compassion, the real essence of compassion, which is Chen Rezi, you know, and uh, so that, that's what, what we aim to do. And um, there's two aspects to the sadhana. In this weekend, we're going to be concentrating on the compassion side, um, but also there's the inseparability of the spiritual master. 
And in the second weekend that we're going to do, probably in July, we'll be looking at the, you know, the guru devotion side of it. But I think first we need to get the compassion side going, the method side going. And, and, and that's what the Buddha of Compassion's really about, you know. Um, practicing together is a really good way to get a flavor of the of the sadhana um, it's quite powerful when you do a practice together and um, i think i think that's about all to say on what we're going to be doing um, because we'll talk about compassion and we'll we'll work a lot of that sort of things those things out uh, as we go through the weekend um, at the moment we're just looking at chen Raisi, and connecting through His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, who is here and present and active on, on this earth, you know. And by doing that, we're going to channel and um, connect to the essence of compassion, which is active everywhere. We know that, I mean, so evident at the moment. To do that, to help us do that, we're going to do some pranayama, some breathing. And, um, you know, I do this for Paula and we encourage this because in Tantra, you're working from the heart, you're working very much in the subtle body of the channels, the winds, the drops. So if you've got, if you're working from here, I mean, you need that as a preparation. All your sutra uh, studying is about preparing you for Tantra. And so when you go into the, uh, the Sadhana, you're not going to be working out emptiness and you're not going to be working out dependent ori origination and all these things. You're going to have, that's a, the groundwork that you do in Sutra. Where we're working in Tantra is really with the subtle soft body with imagination, you know, and um, so to help us do that, we're going to get in touch with that and we're going to do some breathing. So if you could, please, um, would you lay down and find a nice sort of comfortable position and we'll start doing uh, what's called the full breath, um, the full yoga breath. So we can just start to explore the body and get a feel, a feel of this. I think some of you have done this before with me. Um, if you're new to it, well, I'll just lead you through. Um, make sure you're comfortable that you've got cushions and support or something warm, you know, if you need it. We're going to be down on the floor for about 20 minutes. So if you just like to prepare yourself and I'll get ready as well. Okay. So the first thing is to get a good a good position laying down that's comfortable and if you lengthen the neck a little bit just just pushing the chin a little bit towards the um the chest i'm just checking you can all see me but uh, i should be able to talk you through it so just go with it and so just let the feet fall away and the back of the hands are resting on the floor, the palms turning up towards the ceiling, just letting go. So just scanning the body, seeing if it's comfortable, adjusting if it isn't, you know, and usually the areas are the neck and around the hips because we've got that little arch in the back of the spine. You can maybe bend your knees a little bit and just flatten the base of the spine and just letting the feet fall away and if you need any support now's the time to just adjust because we're not going to really be thinking about the body we're going to take our focus to the breath and then just resting our mind scanning the body just drawing ourselves into the room and then into the body. And the first thing we're going to do is 
what's called abdominal breathing, where we're going to breathe into the stomach. And we do it very gently, there's no strain. And the idea is not that we've got to make a big balloon, um, you know, a massive sort of in breath, but we're just going to just expand the stomach, the tummy a little bit so that we can just fill it with air. And that's the only part we do at first. So just breathing out and gently closing the lips. If you can breathe through the nose, that's the way we want to breathe. If it's difficult, then just gently, gently as you can. And take the focus to the in and out breath. So nothing happening yet. Just gently resting on the breath. Just its normal rhythm. Not shallow in relaxation. And just watch it. Entering the nostrils. And moving. And if you place your hands with the tips of your fingers just meeting in the centre of your tummy, just over your tummy area, just so you can get a feeling of expansion. If you think about bellows or like a balloon going up, all done without strain. The lungs are very, very fragile, so gently, gently. So back on the breath. And then as you start to breathe in, follow the breath. Just open up the abdomen and try and open up the back of the abdomen as well. And breathing out. And the tummy just falls back towards the spine as you begin to breathe in again. Follow the breath. Down into the abdomen, blowing out the tummy just slightly, filling the back and breathing out. And just do this in your own rhythm, but with awareness, keeping your awareness and following the breath so you go into the body and down towards the tummy area. And there's no strain. And you feel the fingers just move slightly apart as we breathe in. And we feel them close as the tummy falls back towards the spine and we breathe. Just notice how hollow this feels this morning. It's not blowing that balloon that expands, making sure it doesn't burst. Just a gentle expansion and contraction back to the spine. And then just relax the breathing and breathe normally. You can relax the hands down and just take normal breaths. And the next part of the breath is breathing into the rib cage. 
And instead of just breathing upwards, we're going to try and expand the rib cage out, you know, like an accordion. So we open the rib cage out sideways slightly when we do this breath. And we forget about the tummy at this point. We're just going to work into the rib cage. And as you're breathing in, you feel the rib cage just expand. And as you're breathing out, it contracts and helps to squeeze the air, the prana, out. So place your hands just on the sides of the rib cage because that just gives you a, a feeling of what you're trying to aim for. And then rest your, mouth, uh, your mind on the breath. And then in your own time, start to breathe in. Follow the breath down towards the rib cages and expand them outwards and also into the back. And then as you breathe out, you contract and squeeze the breath out. Just keep thinking about that accordion, just opening out. And contracting as you breathe out. And again, because you're following the breath, the mind goes with the breath. And you can be in this area. And just feel it open up. And it's so releasing. So relaxing. So we'll just continue that for a couple of minutes. Just enjoy relaxing to the breath. There's no strain. Front and back. And your body opening out to your mind. And your mind just in that hollow space. When you just let go and relax the breathing back to its normal rate, breathing and relax the hands again. And we'll just take a moment to rest the breath. And the next part of the breath is breathing up into the shoulder blade area. And you don't get really very much movement. In fact, at the start, you don't get any movement at all um, because it's more of a concentration here because you're going to take all the breath without straining you know, and without raising your shoulders to do this. And you're just going to gently, gently, gently send it up towards the top of the lungs and fill out the space, open out the space that's underneath the collarbone and the shoulder blades. And so if you want, you can put the, your fingers, um, hands, just up on the collarbone, you know, just resting there, just to give you a direction, but you're not really going to feel any movement, but that's quite okay, you know, because it's just directing the in-breath in 
right up to the top of the lungs and then opening out that space. You never usually go there, you know, so it's really, really quite interesting. And the ribs, the tummy, quite inactive during this part of the breath. So this is the third part of the breath. And again, just taking the focus back to the breath, gently going in and out through the nostrils. And then start to breathe a little bit deeper. But try and direct all that in-breath, going in there with your mind. Up towards the top of the lungs. Opening out underneath the collarbone into the shoulder blade area at the back and softening. It's quite different. And continuing your own rhythm, staying with the breath. to direct it all towards the top of the body without moving the shoulders up. Just using your concentration. And keeping your awareness as you're breathing out. And we'll do that just for a couple of minutes. And begin to notice that you really can open out in this area. It's quite pleasant. And letting go as you're breathing out. And as you're breathing in, you just feel that rocky, hard exterior, softening. Opening. All our defences are really in the back of the body. You know, that's our shell, our really hard shell. So just let the breath soften the shell. It just dissolves. And the breath just moves in space. And then just relax the hands, relax the breathing, back to your normal rhythm. So the next step is to put all those three parts of the breath together. And this is called the full, full yoga breath and is the basis of all pranayama. Um, there's a lot, a lot of uh, different exercises we can do in pranayama, but I pick the, these particularly because they're so useful for our practice, for our sitting practice. Right? So now the idea is to put that breath together. It's really important now that you have enough breath to do the three parts, so you have to gauge that to your rhythm. And also, you know, that there's no strain at all. And it, it wants to be like a flow of a wave, you know, so it might feel a bit clunky at first, but this is something you can practice so easily anywhere, anytime. So, um, and it, it really is useful as you'll see uh, when we start to do the Sadhana. So again, resting the mind at the tip of the nostrils, just for the moment, just normal breathing, get your concentration. And remember that concentration isn't tight, 
concentration. It's just gently resting. the awareness. I'll just talk you through what you'll do. You'll breathe in first to the tummy and to the abdomen and just open it out. So it doesn't want to be a huge balloon because you won't have enough you know intake of breath to go into the rib cage. Then you let that breath in breath go up into the rib cage and open it out and you finish off the breath taking it up towards shoulder blades and the top of the lungs and just have the hands relaxed with the palms facing up for this if you like and just beginning in your own time breathing in first to the abdomen then to the rib cage and then out sideways up towards the top of the lungs and as you're breathing out, feeling the rib cage contracting, squeezing the breath out, and the tummy pulls back towards the floor at the end of the in breath, sort of springs back, ready to take the next breath. And you come down into the tummy, open it out. Spread the wings of the rib cage, open up, remember back and front, and up to the tops of the lungs. And then just gradually, gently controlling through that breath. So please do this in your own rhythm, without any strain. We're going to do this for a couple of moments and as we get comfortable with this breathing we relax on that in breath we remember the awareness and just feel that body opening out softening space hollow all the images just start to dissolve. soft with yourself and gently and after your next exhalation just sink into the floor, dissolve into the floor. And keeping your awareness, just that gentle awareness of the space, letting go. Go into the space. Again, I'm just not to lie. Mm. 
just bring ourselves back to focus because now we're going to turn over onto our tummy and do the same breathing on our tummy, on our stomach. And the reason for this is because we never think about the back area at all. And so when we lie on our, on our front, um, we can suddenly really feel and concentrate on the uh, in-breath and out-breath going to the back of the body. And it's just good to, um, it really is good to uh, uh, experience this. Uh, it, it helps to make the breath a lot fuller. So if you can find a comfortable way of laying on your front, uh, you can support your chin with this, or you can put a cushion underneath there, whatever you find is comfortable. And just adjust your position so that you can bring the breath in, you know, you haven't got it too twisted, you know. So there's a nice flow. Um, this is something you can do in bed as well, you know, it, it just, even though I've done this breathing for many years, um, I still do some of this as well, just to remind myself about filling into the back area and softening that area. So remembering what we did a few minutes ago, we are now going to do the abdominal breathing into the stomach. But now our, 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 our concentration, our awareness is going to be much more at the back of the body. So now just taking your awareness to the nostrils, your breath going in and out. And then start to breathe in towards the abdomen and open it out. So you will feel that pressure against the floor, but you're really keeping your awareness and opening out at the back of the body now and softening, you know, this hard shell. So let's keep doing that for a few moments. And it's quite different. harder to move. And this is all your protection. So keeping that awareness very much going towards the back of the body. We're going to do the same and breathe into as before and breathe into the rib cage. So into the back of the rib cage, breathing it out, steady with the breath, breathing in. And then it's going to the back of the rib cage, opening up. Feel that really softening. Experience that space. Just relaxing the heart. Relaxing the 
heart come to the brow, going up towards the top of the lungs, going towards the shoulder blades. Again, rest of the mind and the nerves and the nostrils following the breath. And with a concentration that takes all the breath down into that hollow space, that directs it up towards the top of the lungs. Opening up the shoulder blades. And that's the area the mind is exploring both areas. Softening. The really hard shell. And then just relax, just take the head to the side and sink into the mat. Dissolve away and you are sinking through it. Notice the difference in the breathing as it becomes shallow. And just relax in that space. Now with that gentle awareness, I'm going to come to sitting and I'm just going to do a very short meditation using that nice spacious body. So in your own time, if you just roll over, you just have a stretch and then come to a sitting position. Okay, if we can all just find a nice comfortable sitting position. And we're going to do a, a, a meditation now based on this really nice spacious body. And it's a loving kindness meditation. So we're going to start with giving kindness to ourselves. So I just want you to stay in the space of your breath. You can just rest your eyes gently. Stay in the openness of the breathing. Just be gentle breathing now, but just staying in that openness, what we experience, what we are. And we're just feeling very, very, very safe, embraced.
Nothing can harm us. This is what we really are. Let's just enjoy that space, that freedom. And that space is, allows our thoughts to come and go. So you don't need to stop them. But you have an awareness that notices them. And it's a very gentle awareness. It's a very loving awareness. So even if it's not a nice thought, just gently look on these thoughts. They just arise. And is all quite ins insubstantial. And even the bad thoughts, inverted commas, what we call bad thoughts, the disturbing thoughts, we can embrace those. Not you a child that's hurting. Gradually, thoughts just settle. We're not paying enough attention to them. We keep an awareness when they come and go. We just let them be. Just accepting. Not rejecting. that lovely, gentle, warm, safe place, space. Begin to think about someone, or more than one, people who have been kind, really, really kind to you. Think of a time when you were really, really loved. You just think of the warmth that you felt when that love was being shown. You're all creatures that need love. So now we just go out with our spacious mind towards that loving feeling. Just fill the space with that. And just gently breathe it in to our space. And just feel that warmth and glow. That love, that kindness. And in the space. And send that back out again. The most loving, 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 kindest moments I've ever felt. Embracing you. I breathe out towards that. Gentle breaths. And let the breath go. Just open it to it. So 
just gentleness, awareness, and letting go. Filling with love, that space, and sending it out into space. And then just relax. Take a deeper breath. Take your time. And we will now to need to have a sitting position that's comfortable just to do some morning, morning prayers. And meditation. But first we'll do our refuge. So, um, if we could have, uh, if you could look at the daily prayers, we've got the taking refuge and generating bodhicitta, and this is about our motivation. Um, why do we need motivation? Well, it's a pretty strong energy, but it's also very important um, that we start an action if we start an action with a motivation it makes it so much more effective it is so much stronger um and so that's why we sort of set up this thing of we motivate before practice just to and then we dedicate at the end of practice and that way we seal the action so it can never you know it can never really be harmed by future anger it is a really complete action, a complete virtuous action. Um, and for those reasons, we motivate before our practice and we dedicate at the end of it. And then when we've done the, uh, the um, refuge prayer, which is the motivation, uh, we're going to, if you can have ready, you don't need to read it because I'm going to really talk you through it, but um, what we call a daily meditation that Lama Zopa highly recommends, I found very, very, beneficial and it's a direct meditation on the graduated path containing all the important meanings so it's the lamrim really and uh, that's the basis of uh, really the training that we need for tantra so first of all let's just think about the space in front of us set up our own refuge field take time to do that and just as your normal refuge field is quite different for everyone and then feel that all the sentient beings are with you and around you surrounding you those that you are close to those that you don't know the strangers and those that you positively don't like just all of them they're all included and they can spread out for universes, you know, just make it big, make it, uh, you know, imagine, use your imagination. And then together we'll say, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly by my practice of giving and other perfections May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. 
by my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. So at this point, we feel the refuge field beaming down at us, very happy, very pleased, and cascading blessings down through our crown of our head and through the crown of every single sentient being right across the realms, right across the universes. We all receive those blessings. And that's our motivation. And now for our meditation on the graduated path, the Lam Rin. I'll talk you through this and we'll just meditate on the points. And we've been with essence encompassing all the Buddhas, originator of all the holy dharma of scripture and realization, principle of all the Aryas, intending virtue in the glorious holy gurus, I take refuge. So here we think about the gurus we have met listen to, heard, given teachings, and we feel their blessings come down. Because we're not going to meet, or well, we won't recognize the Buddha if we see him in this lifetime. But the gurus, they're our, they're our conduit, our connection teaching us the Dharma so that we can travel on this path to remove suffering and to help other sentient beings so the, the goal is really important just place that in your mind and even if you haven't met the root guru yet all the gurus are there to benefit us. And depending on how we view the gurus, depends on how we receive the teachings. So first we just open our mind to the preciousness of the gurus and in this weekend especially his Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Please, Gurus, bless my mind to become Dharma, for Dharma to become the path, and the path to be without obstacles. Until I achieve Buddhahood, please bless me to be like Shono, Norsang, and Taktungu. By devoting myself correctly to the virtuous friend, with pure thought and action, seeing whatever is done as pure and accomplishing whatever is said and advised. So this is the first step on the path. We've met the teachings, we're meeting the gurus. Now it's up to us to open our hearts to them because truly they can show us the whole path Take us to enlightenment. We can't do it on our own. Just think with our hearts. The gratitude to these kind teachers. And we determine to listen and make use of these teachings in the world so that we can really benefit <coughs> sentient beings. And then we think about this life. 
please bless me to see that this greatly meaningful body with freedoms and richnesses is difficult to find and easily perishes, that action and result are so profound and the suffering of the transmigratory beings is so difficult to bear. So here we think about just how fortunate we are. It doesn't happen very often, in fact, very rarely. So here we are in the West, enjoying great freedoms. We may not think so at the moment, but really, if we compare ourselves to most of the world, we have food, clothing, a roof over our heads. So many precious things and it can easily all go, it can perish very, very easily. And we just take it for granted, don't we? I think it's gonna go on. We know we're going to die. We think we're immortal. Well, we act as if we are, but we aren't. And it does easily perish. And also our conditions easily perish. So these are very, 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 fortunate conditions and the most fortunate is that we've met the Dharma in this lifetime. I just think about this. We realize that action and result, cause and effect, how that affects, how that's the basis of samsara. And it really, at its base, is suffering. Even happiness is just a temporary relief. And I'm not being pessimistic here. Sometimes it seems like a, a very negative view, but it's not. It's a real view. It's a realistic view. Our actions bring results. And we all experience those results. And though we may have happiness, it's very temporary before suffering moves back in. So we think about our own suffering. We find that quite unbearable. So then we reach out with that thought and realize it's not just me that's suffering. every sentient being. is suffering in the world the same way. It's temporary release, temporary happiness, and then suffering again, because that's the basis of samsara. So we think of how that affects all beings. And with this certainty, certitude, this really, you know, mind that has really looked at samsara and really recognized, yeah, there's a lot of nice things going on there, but you know what? It's not a bowl of cherries and it does end up in tears. So what's, what's the alternative? And that's peace, you know, that's dropping the delusions that cause all this pain. And Dharma is the path 
that's going to show us how to do them. So thereby may I take refuge from the depths of my heart in the three rare sublime ones. Abandon negative karma and accomplish virtue according to the Dharma. So here we really recognize the root out of the suffering. In dependence on that, even if I achieve the mere higher rebirth of a deva or a human, I will still have to experience suffering endlessly in samsara because of not having abandoned and being under the control of the disturbing thought obscurations. Therefore, by reflecting well upon the way of cycling in samsara, please bless me to continuously follow day and night the path of the three types of precious trainings, the principal method for becoming free from samsara. So even though we've taken refuge and we've you know, started to look at our actions and realize the results, <laughs> we don't get away from them. <laughs> you know, we might in this lifetime, but you know, it's waiting to come round at some time. What goes round does truly, truly come round. I mean, you won't experience anybody else's karma, results of, but you certainly will experience your own. So we take refuge and we're trying to do virtuous actions, realizing the negative actions causes so much harm. Everybody causes everybody harm. But even that is only going to get us a good human rebirth, a precious human rebirth. And there, there'll be more suffering. And it doesn't matter whether we're a king or, you know, a very, very powerful, rich pop star or, you know, whatever high, high positions you can think of um, in this samsara. A deva, you know, a, a, a deity. You know, even the gods. Are you, you know, subject to cause and effect? And they fall from their realms, you know. It's all moving, it's all cause and effect. So we may get a, a higher rebirth, but we will still experience the suffering because it's endless in samsara. And though we've started to sort out our actions and do more virtuous actions so you know we don't harm ourselves quite as much dropping the negative actions realizing they do harm us we start to reflect upon the way of cycling in sense in samsara and we're still under the control of disturbing thoughts. So, you know, we've been in samsara for beginningless time. And, you know, it's going to take an awful lot to, to change this mind that's habitually been uh, promoting itself and causing havoc for ourselves and for others. So here we just start to tighten up the training and really, you know, the training, the three types of precious training they're talking about are the ethics, which we've already started to work on. And the concentration. And meditation, because then we can get to those deeper levels of the mind, where the, what we call the imprints. 
of the effects of our, our delusional actions. That's where, you know, the imprints are. So we can work everything out and think, yeah, you know, it makes sense to be virtuous. It makes sense to do this and do that in the Dharma. But, you know, down there, from beginningless lives, we're imprinted. And that's the stuff that's hard to shift. So these three trainings lead us on to eventually becoming free from samsara and all the suffering. In dependence upon that, even if I achieve near liberation, which is our personal liberation, since there is no sentient being of the six types, who has not been my father and mother. Please bless me to turn my mind away from the lower happiness of Nirvana. Thinking I must fulfill their purpose, may I generate precious bodhicitta by equalizing and exchanging myself with others and follow the conduct of the conqueror's sons, the six parameters, and so forth. So here we really start to take a turning point because we can achieve mere liberation and liberation is, is personal liberation. But what good is that going to do for all the other sentient beings? And there's only one of me and there's countless sentient beings if we spread our mind, you know, just not on this planet, go into quantum realms, go into other realms, you know, there's a lot of beings and a lot of forms. And so, you know, what do I achieve by just getting liberation for myself? I couldn't bear it, actually. Being in heaven and all those people in hell. So here we start to take a turn towards all those people, all those beings in all the different forms. We've got to really keep this open. No restrictions, because this mind starts to notice the suffering of all beings and realizing that, you know, we're not in this on our own. Throughout beginningless time, we've been dependent on all these beings and their suffering. So we start to turn our attention towards them and think, what can I do? How can I fulfill their purpose? And here we're given the instruction. We start by equalizing and exchanging ourselves with others. And we also follow the conduct of the conqueror's sons, the six parameters, which are the perfections of patience, generosity, discipline, and joyous effort, concentration, and meditation. So plenty to go on there. And then having trained my mind in the common path in that way, even if I have to experience the sufferings of samsara for a long time, it will not upset me. However, by regarding sentient beings with extraordinary, unbearable compassion, please bless me to enter the quick path of the Vajrayana teachings. And that's where we are now. By protecting my vows and samayas more than my life, May I quickly accomplish the unified Vajradhara state in one brief lifetime of this degenerate time. We want to do this as quickly as possible. There's an urgency. As we build our compassion and empathy and 
realize all these sentient beings are suffering and we're suffering, it becomes an urgency. And the reason we enter the tantric path is first because our minds have had the blessings of the teachings, making them a, a fertile ground to do these practices. And then the fact that the, the tantric path is the fast track. It's, we can do this as quickly as possible for some, in some cases in one lifetime and that has, that has happened. May not happen to us, but for sure, if we enter this path with sincerity and practice in just a few lifetimes, we can gain enlightenment. And then we really, really can be effective not just relieving the temporary suffering of beings, but really, really all suffering. So that's the path. That's the graduated path. It's very clear, very worked out, quite structured. And then we'll just finish with Prayer to the gurus, realizing just the big, huge part they play in all this. May I not arise heresy even for a second with regard to the actions of the glorious guru. May I see whatever actions are done as pure. And with this devotion, may I receive the guru's blessings in my heart. Feel the blessings pour down from all the gurus even if you haven't got your own personal one. They're all there working for us. Magnificent and precious Root Guru, please abide on the lotus seat at my heart. Guide me with your great kindness and grant me the realizations of your holy body, speech and mind. So let's just soak that in. Feel those blessings going down through the crown of our head. If we haven't met our root guru, then the Dalai Lama is just fine. And these blessings go right down to that heart space and just fill that empty body. And then we just make a short ded dedication to see all the action. So it's safe. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish increase more and more. Thank you. So I think that's um, the morning uh, useful meditation. Um, so really it's time for breakfast now. Try and stay in the zone. Um, you know, I know you've got your lives going on around you, but um, when we do retreat, if you can not dive into your devices, I really, really think you benefit because you just keep yourself in this space. But obviously you have your responsibilities and have a nice breakfast. Uh, when we come back, we're going to do a little bit of chat and discussion. I'll give you a little chat on Tantra. And then we'll do, after the break, um, the long sadhana. Um, I did ask, if you're doing this all weekend, if you could set up offering bowls. Now, many of us don't have an altar. But what we're doing, really, is inviting a guest. 
And so, you know, I popped some little flowers over there. Um, you can do it how you want, but, you know, just feel that you, yeah, this weekend we're going to be inviting Chen Raisi into our space and he's holding us the Dalai Lama. So, you know, let's make them welcome. And uh, uh, also, if you have these pictures, um, if you can have a picture of the Dalai Lama and Chen Raisi, um, in front of you or somewhere near you. I think it's quite good uh, for the visualizations. Uh, I don't know if you printed out the one that uh, we sent in the resources, but that's perfect. This is the one that Paula used and it gives you His Holiness and Chen Raisi and the three uh, mantra quite clearly. And also, uh, sorry, the syllable and the mantra syllables and so very useful, have a little look at that. Um, but if you haven't got it printed out, just helps because visualization uh, comes through familiar, uh, familiarity, um, which is just looking at the pictures and until they imprint. Have a really nice breakfast and thanks. That's our first session and we'll see you at 10.30 your time. Is it, have I got that right, Wendy? Yeah, yes, it's 10.30 UK time that we resume. Yeah.